All right, Duplex, you can you can do it. Me? Yeah. Me? Yes, yeah. you. Oh, sorry. Hello, welcome to the mailbag. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Perion Flax, and I'm joined this week by my good buddies, Lewis Brindley. Uh, hi. And Sips. Uh, hi. Both of the Yogscast, uh, as am I. And together, we shall peruse your emails. Uh, and this week is an interesting selection that I guess we could just dive straight into if you guys want. Wait, before yep. we start, I've answered the call. I wrote some haikus. Oh, you did? Fantastic. I found my calling, yeah. All uh, right, let's, I, let's hear I, it. I'm not let's reading them, though. I'll post uh, one. I've, I've written three. I'll post them one at a time in general, and you guys can read them, okay? okay and you can okay. read them in whatever voice you want Lewis, to. Lewis, do you want to read them or shall I read them? Uh, I'll read the second okay, one. Okay. You read the first okay, one, okay. and then Sips can read the third one. Okay. okay. Who, I'm sure they get better as he goes. Oh, no, no they don't. They get uh -oh. far worse. You're, you're, you're going to love these. Ready? <laughs> Here comes the first one. Post right. it. Clickety clack clack. I am ordering online. A gallon of lube. <laughs> and now you'll find that this <laughs> adheres so to the traditional structure of the haiku. Mm. <laughs> Clickety clack clack. Yes. I'm ordering online a gallon of lube. There's it's a little bit of repetition in there, but... Uh, no, I like no, it. I think that's beautiful. The next one's think... even worse, uh, if you can believe that. <laughs> here here, here right. it comes. Ready? Words, 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 words. I ignore all these word words. Wisconsin emails. <laughs> there we go. I, I got like another five Wisconsin emails I've had to ignore just in the last few days. So yeah. right. Wow, this is this is great. This is like yeah, this is like the mailbag life. I put a lot of effort into this. This honestly, this is very good. Okay. These are fantastic. Last yeah. one for now. I mean, uh, this is this, this is the start of uh, an incredible career, but. Here you go. You ready? Yeah. You got to read this. Go on, tips. You, yeah, go no, for no, it. No, no, I'm not. No, you oh, guys right. You've got to read it. Come I on, write you've got to you perform. You've you got to go. perform no. your own art. No, right, why yeah. don't you guys right. go? Your mum is walking, kicking a can down the road. She is moving house. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> it's a good one. Yeah. Oh. A haiku, I would, a haiku I would buy mum, mum a joke. book of these. Yeah, I would. Oh, this is so good. Yeah. These are excellent. There. <laughs> done well it. done. Well done. I've done it. Oh, anyway, that is that is mag they are magnificent tips. Wow. I, I so really much. like those. I honestly, Please I think do those more. are excellent. The uh, the, the mum one is is top top notch. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a little joke that I stole from uh, White Man Can't Jump, the 1990s hit. Do you yes. remember that one? Yeah, I do. Oh, really? Yes. Well, it's good to see it come back around again. Yeah, I mean, that's it. We're, I'm, I'm, I'm rebooting it, you know? Some of the jokes from that movie. I don't know if it, uh, I don't it still think stands you, up. But... I don't, I, it's nice of you to credit them, but, you know, I don't think anyone would have known no. where that was from if you hadn't said. No, I, and... well, I, you know, I just, uh, I, I, I want to be fully transparent. You know, I don't want to... I don't want to steal other people's thunder, but I thought it was uh, it was time to uh, put it into haiku form. So uh, mm. hopefully, so, so long hopefully Woody and uh, Wesley are out there smiling. Uh, this from is the, the art heavens. of you know taking funny, adapting for a modern That's audience. Right. That's right, or an ancient audience, That's I guess, right. with haiku. I, I I kept it. I kept it. Tried to stay. You know, within the confines of the podcast as well, except for maybe the last one, which is. Uh, a mom joke, which don't feature very often on this podcast, but certainly Wisconsin. And we talk about lube a lot, it turns out. It's sure. fair. Keep it rooted. Keep it yep. real. Yeah. Keep it real. Always. Yeah. yeah. Love right. it. Here we go. Um, this is uh, from Scott. Uh, had a question for Sips regarding Jersey. Yes. Uh, which places he considers worth visiting. I'm thinking of taking the ferry there from the UK, as I always wanted to take my car on a ferry. I'll completely understand if Sips has cocooned himself inside his garage and never ventures into the town. But Scott, well, I, looking for suggestions. Well, the, the 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 giveaway there is it's a small place. The town is a good place to start. There's there's some stuff in town. Lewis has been. He can tell you it's not a bad town. It's uh it's it's quite small, but there's some stuff to do. And uh, while you're there. You can maybe find some other stuff to do that's not in town. You know what I mean? Just see see where it takes you. It is a pretty small, boring place, though. I would say. I think if yeah, you're like uh, sixty five years old plus, you would probably really like it because it's kind of slow and uh, it's got a pace to it, doesn't it, Lewis? I went. Um, I rented a bike one day and I cycled around the coast of the island in a day yeah. so it's not that big no it it was it was fun though it was really nice to do there's a lot of really interesting like little bits of quaint scenery a yeah. lot of farmland yeah 
A lot of um, rich people mansions and stuff. Yes, yeah. So yeah, could, could you, you're talking about stuff to do in the town. Could you just give us three suggestions for something that you could do in the town? In Jersey. Um, Jersey. You could Ooh. go have a nice meal. There's a lot of seafood uh, can have a restaurants. Meal. Have a nice meal. Fresh you can have seafood. a good time. Yeah, you, can, um, you could go and visit a, an old Gregorian house that's been uh, lovingly restored. Uh, and, you, and there's examples of how people used to live. Back in the day, I think people are looking for stuff that's like off trip advisor. Do you know what I mean like, right. like, what's your secret like, like recommendation for for like a non a non tourist, like not the Jersey War Caves or whatever? Well, or yeah, the- I mean the War Tunnels is kind of like you know worth seeing though. It's it's interesting. There's a lot of old um, Nazi fortifications and buildings that they built when they occupied the island in World War Two. So if you're interested in that time period or whatever. There's a lot of they got a lot of stuff down there. They got lots of old guns and uniforms and helmets <laughs> yeah, it's, and it's, all that shit. Um, it's, it's pretty underground. Yeah, um, and there's a they've got a really nice um, zoo. Jer- Jersey's got a nice zoo. It's called it's like a it's like a wildlife conservation trust set up by this guy called Gerald Durrell. And um, he's yeah, he's, my family and other animals. He wrote he's, that book. He's long gone, but uh, he was. Um, Princess Anne has been over a couple of times. Was was well into it, and um, they had a statue of Henry a, Cavill. The statue as well. of Hen- Henry Cavill, and they do all sorts of. They just got they got there. some uh, some big big ass tortoises from Bristol over. I th- Bristol they? tried to get rid of their their big tortoises, and uh, so Jersey Zoo was like, "Yeah, we'll have them." We went to see them the other week, and they're huge. Gosh, they're huge, uh, and, and, they, they, and their enclosure ones. is like state of the art too. Man, it's like brand new. It's got like a mist spraying system. It's so humid in there, but they love it. You should see them; they're just basking all day. They take really mm. good care of them. So uh, that's another thing you could do um, mm. if you like that sort of thing. It's lots of like it's very family oriented, you know, because it's a small place. There's lots of places to take your kids if it's you very have safe. kids. There's lots of places to go and eat. There's lots of places to eat that has like a nice view to enjoy while you're eating. You know, it's a, it's just a quiet little sleepy place. But um, that lighthouse is always um, Corbier Lighthouse. Yeah, it's a nice one. There's a nice yeah. lighthouse on out on a spit that looks like quite a nice. You can um, make a nice trek out there. Do you it's know a very, they open very it? Picture postcard. They open one, it yeah. for one night every year, and uh, if you're lucky enough to book, you can stay overnight. Like uh, just only oh, one, wow. only one night. Yeah. But imagine that you wake up and you just got that lighthouse. You can see out, see the whole sea and everything. Oh, I heard they were like selling some lighthouses in America. Really? Um, but but for real cheap. But you have to. You can't live in them, and you have to main, continue maintaining them. So it's like, yeah. who wants to buy? It's like a having a pet. You know? Yeah. It's like a. <laughs> It's like, yeah, you can buy a lighthouse for 25 grand, but then you've signed a contract saying you have to keep it going. Yeah. I feel like they're hoping that like local cons- conservation groups, some old man, you know, will come along. And, yeah, um, or like a lighthouse enthusiast, you know, like yeah. you get them from time to time, don't you? Yeah, I could, I could imagine meeting one of those guys. You could, I, I, I picture in my mind's eye a lighthouse enthusiast. He's got a beard. Um, he's got he's, a, uh, he's got a, um, a cork pipe. I um and uh, like <laughs> okay. a corn a corn cob pipe a corn they, cob pipe yeah you know those you ones don't see that looks, those anymore he's got one of those with a big bushy beard was it that is general pipe stained which one was it it was, was it a pattern oh, no it wasn't was pattern I thought it was an admiral and I he's got a uh, he's got a yellow uh, rain hat on as well like a uh, like general a, MacArthur was it yeah. MacArthur I think so well with yeah, a corn well, cob pipe yeah. his corn cob pipe all right. Let's, oh. let's move on from MacArthur's corn pop pipe to a disease. I hope that, uh, I hope that answered okay. the question about Jersey. I hope they I catch hope. on it, again. It did. It did. Okay, corn pop pipe. Like, I, I reckon people should be like bringing them back. Yeah. Here we go. Sauna workers lung. That's the title of this email. Right. Uh, well, that's what the, you get when you smoke from a corn well, cob apparently pipe. Apparently so. This is a list of <laughs> hypersensitivity pneumonitis. Which is can, can be called by a whole bunch of different names. It's a disease based on the provoking antigen. Okay, this is a link to a Wikipedia article. Here are Ooh. some of the types of hypersensitivity pneumonitis: bird fancier's lung, what also the hell? also called pigeon breeder's lung or poultry right. worker's lung. Right. If you get avian proteins in your lungs from feathers and bird droppings, you can get a, a HP, as we'll call it. Uh, this is called um, cheese washer's lung which is people who wash cheese 
The, the exposure to cheese casings can give them uh, a, a bad case of HP. Coffee. So work is this like lung. an allergy that you can get? Yeah. So I, I like... think you get too much of this stuff in your lungs, and it causes hypersensitivity pneumonitis, which we'll read up more about in a sec. There's farmer's lung, detergent workers' disease, hot tub lung, which is just mist from hot tubs gives you hot tub lung. Jeez. Whoa. Uh, Japanese summer house hypersensitivity pneumonitis. Which is damp wood and damp mats. The they give off stuff that you inhale. Japanese summer house. That's very specific. Yeah, it is. But you could imagine like someone working on a holiday camp where their whole job is to <laughs> right. like dust out these dusty old um, cabins. You know, every day. Well, there's yeah, there's God. thatched roof disease. Um, there's uh, one called sequoiasis, which is from the the, the sawdust and, and bark of a redwood. What? Sorry. Pause for a second. Okay. Why were we reading this thing about sauna work? Somebody workers emailed love? me the Wikipedia link. They just said just an interesting. They just, just said just check this out. That's the, check, this the is total weird. Total of the email. I loved it. Right. It was the be- one of the best emails we've ever had. It was just okay, literally no. one sentence. It said straight to the point. Check this out. And I looked and I was I was amused. So well done. I liked it. I agree. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No good. Yeah. No yeah. thanks. No love. The tribe. None of that shit. Just straight to the fucking just point. Straight just straight to the, the Wikipedia point. link. Yeah. yeah. That. All right. No. Carry on. But here's a weird one. Trombone player's lung or brass instrument player's lung, various mycobacteria that live inside of instruments. Because you think about it, you're blowing warm, moist air into them. Yes. It's a, a hive of bacteria. Uh, and all you have is that disgusting valve to let spit out. So all these disgusting <laughs> mycobacteria live in there. You get trombone player's lung in no time. Yeah, but then what you do is you flip in, fill it full of like um, cheese. Dettol. Or whatever. No, no, you, you might you clean it out <laughs> <laughs> with something, <laughs> something, and then you get, you know, well, you do that, but then you get detergent workers' disease. Exactly. Like, can't wait. Do you think, I know, you... I'll shove some molasses down there. Well, you'll get bagasosis in no time, which is from I mean, the, uh, the, pressed sugar cane. None of those horns have are blowing back onto you, though. So you shouldn't be inhaling when you're blowing into a horn. But I, I, guess, you... I guess they grow around the the edge of the uh, the thing. And when you're going, Hah! all the other people are doing the same thing. You're blasting the mycobacteria into the uh, environment into around other you, people. and you're breathing right. in everybody else's brass instrument lung, causing uh, mycobacteria. Well, that's actually or... a problem because, in a sense, right? Like a lot of these things can be solved just with a face mask. Right, like can't play a trombone with a face but, mask. Yeah, what but that one chatting? isn't. Yeah. Well, but no, but like if you're working in a chicken coop or cleaning, oh, I got you. I got you. Or, or like any of the other ones you mentioned, you can wear a face mask. But that one, very specifically, you need your mouth for. Yeah. So yeah, is it because like could they wear like a filter over their nose and like make sure they breathe in like or regulate their breathing somehow? To, like, I don't know. I, I mean, I assume I if you're a... working with anything like this, you're wearing masks. There's like... no way around it. It's it's the way that the world works for every, and it's the way that like a lot of things work when you think about it. But for every good thing, there has to be a bad thing to counteract it. So, you know, you're playing trombone, you're loving every minute of it, and you're like, God, I'm so blessed. But the downside is you could get tromboner's lung from it. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, there's got to be a, there's got to be, a, you can't just have a good thing. It's it true. has to be balanced. Are you saying out. that it, we have to do it in moderation? That's fair. That, that is fair enough. If you if you do anything all day, you're gonna wear out some part of your body. Exactly. Right? Shit. Is that true? Yes, it is. <laughs> better stop something I do every day. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna wear out. You're gonna wear out your hand, uh, and you oh, you might no. wear out your your man as well. Well, if you well, keep at it. obviously this is the home of the tiny penis. So if you just wear it down to a nub. Problem mm. solved, I guess. True, yeah. there is that about it, yes. Uh, all right, here's a, here's, a, here's a good one. This is uh, from Maka. Used to work in youth justice for kids with the ages of 8 and 14 in New Zealand. Uh, he worked in the ultra-high risk area, so they had 8 meter fences and a 1 to 1 ratio for guards to kids. And the kids are not allowed to wear shoes in the unit, only for excursions. Whoa, this is, these the are heck? some bad boys. The kids, one Christmas, were asked what they wanted as a present, as a group reward, I guess for good behaviour. They all voted for a trampoline. The staff put oh, it together, no. one, uh, they, they put one together over the next week and the trampoline was kept in the middle of the courtyard. Okay. You can already see where this is going. <laughs> yeah, I can. Every day the kids would come over and kick it, so that over the next three weeks the trampoline gradually ended up near to the teaching block. Then. 
out of uh, three of the boys um, who were mates got into a big fight and their shoes all ended up on top of the teaching block in a childish tit for tat fight. Right. Surprisingly, they sorted their differences out very quickly and were back to being thick as thieves and hanging out near the trampoline. We all watched the show as they all bounced higher and higher and higher. And the next thing, one kid gets double bounced on top of the teaching block, then the second one, and then they haul the third one up behind them. Of course, their shoes are already on the roof. So they stick them on their feet, they go down the drain pipe on the far side of the teaching block, over the small fence on the second, second sort of set of fences, and leg it. Uh, they were all eventually recaptured two to three weeks later, when Whoa, we had to send them to separate facilities to mitigate the problem in the future. They managed to cause, wait, let me see how many zeros this is, $100,000 worth of damage on their respective crime sprees while they'd escaped. Whoa. Well, Maka, I've got to say, if you run a prison that's based on fences, giving a trampoline to the prisoners doesn't seem like a great idea to me. I yeah, it's so funny. Like I, I, when 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 you you said what they want for Christmas, I was thinking well, maybe they want a ladder, shovels. Maybe they want yeah. like a, <laughs> 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 we're really into gardening. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. Oh my god, that's great. I thought uh, that maybe was a like good one. a big. Big um, airfix model of a glider. Yeah, you know. <laughs> uh, a thousand foot of rope, please, and uh, and a, yeah, and a glider. I love how they suddenly they suddenly perfected their like um, their routine as yeah. well to get them both onto it. But honestly, pretty smart from the kids, like to to come up with the idea of having a fight to get their shoes. How are we going to get our shoes out? Are we going to need them when we escape? They they properly planned this. Yeah, it's like a whole like uh, great escape sort of yeah. thing. Yeah. Really These well three guys are the need to have a movie made about. Do you know what I mean? Uh, this is the start of a movie, isn't it? That, oh, yeah, you know? yeah. This is like origin story for some superhero Of course. Team. Everyone loves a bad boy to come good at well, the end. Well, until you know? they oh, get yeah. robbed by a bad boy, but yeah, sure. Yeah, nobody wants to be robbed by nobody a bad boy, wants. that's for sure. Here's, uh, here's one from Ed. Uh, Hyperion Lewis and Sips love the show, blah, blah, blah. This, that's his words. Right. In, in Mailbag 12, <laughs> you spoke about British people okay. thinking they could take on a deer in a fight. We did 12 yes. mailbags? Yeah, we've done a bunch of them. Oh my god, man. I know you said, please don't email us about fighting animals because we won't <laughs> read it, but I had to email in to say, anyone who thinks they could win in a fight against a deer is a fucking idiot. <laughs> well, I mean, that's... Of course. Right. I mean, of you're course. never going to fucking fight against a deer. Like, that's, all they, that's exactly. all they do out in the wild. They buck and they run and they buck some more. Like, they got nothing else to do. You know, well, that's like he, saying, I'm going to win, uh, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna win a, a game of chess against, um, you know, <laughs> what, you, that's it. Yeah, you, you know, you're never going to. I, I have genuinely seen a person get hit by a deer and they were insanely lucky to not be severely injured. He lives in a part of the UK with a large deer population. He was walking the dog with his partner and their father, and they heard a load of noise in the hedge next to them. Next thing they know, a female red deer comes charging out and nutted the dad straight in the face. Jeez. Um, <laughs> so the red deer is the UK's largest land mammal, apparently. Uh, they can be up to 1.5 meters tall, weigh up to 120 kilograms, and run anywhere up to 40 miles an hour. Now, hang on. I think... That must be taking cows out of the equation, because I'm pretty sure cows are bigger. I don't know if he means wild, because 120 kilos a cow is a lot more than that. Anyway, males can be even bigger, up to 1.8 meters, and weighing 190 kilos with antlers tough enough to pierce steel. Good Basically, God. a deer is the animal version of a motorbike, but with pointy spikes on its face. The father was instantly knocked unconscious, uh, but he was okay. So yeah, in in all in all uh, in all summary, there from Ed, don't fuck with deer. Anyone that thinks they could take a deer on is a is a fucking idiot, to quote Ed. Yeah, well, yeah, in hand to hand combat. We already anyway. knew that, Ed. But thanks for uh, thanks for uh, cementing what we already said. Uh, or wait, with did we anecdote. say that? Did I? What? Did I? Who who was the one who said that you could never win a fight against a deer? I, I, think I, we, I, I think we all agreed. I think we all agreed we, we couldn't fight fuck all. Oh, yeah. right, we? Right. I mean, like, they, you know, anyone that, like, but the, we were responding to a survey where quite a decent number of British people were claiming that they could take a deer in a fight, and of course it's laughable. Right, right. Well, I think they have a false idea of, I mean, they, they, the stag obviously is, is probably a different question, but I think people think of Bambi, they think of a deer as, like, yeah. a little bit docile. I mean, again, you know, the, like, as with all these things, the caveat is, this animal is not behaving like it would if it saw you in the wild and it's not going to run away. It's a fight to the death. It is a fight yeah. to the death. It's a cage match to the death. Yes, yeah. against a bigger, stronger animal. You, you are doomed. 
You are yeah, absolutely much, good. You have they no have tools, really no fast weapons. Reflexes as well. Very fast. And, and they, they will, do they that. They don't thing. give a fuck. They go up on their hind legs and they do that thing with their front legs where they like rapidly punch you. Have you ever seen right. that thing? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Right. Okay. Yeah. If you get if if a couple of those land, you're probably dead. Honestly, yeah. like I mean, they're all bone and sinew. You know yeah. what I mean? These, these are hard animals to take. You gotta understand, and, like, and they yeah. won't be like no. Humans no more. are not made for hand to hand combat. We kind of evolved with spears. I'm no, we're absolutely made. Even for hand -to -hand if you were combat. lucky enough to get the deer down, you couldn't even fully choke the deer. Their necks are huge. Like you wouldn't be able to get your hands around their neck or anything. Yeah. Like it'd be also, impossible. Also, it's going to be pushing with all of its legs to get up. It's going to be It's going to be kicking like crazy. It's yeah. going to be so so hard. And it's they're so. I think it, again, it would be a different matter if if there was any kind of. If if there was any kind of tools involved, yeah, right? if of you course, had, of course, if you had any kind of just uh, if you had any, I, I think like you know like look like looking back like the pre-human Homo species, you know like Homo erectus. I'm pretty sure they were using tools. They were using like. Right, you know they were they were attacking on mass in a group to take down. But I mean, we, animals, we are definitely you know. built for hand to hand combat. Like that, we that is clearly a big factor in our survival is being able to fight. I mean, there's a reason that punching is so powerful. Like, and our hands are designed to be clenched into fists, not just for holding things, but for hitting as well. And all yeah. our bones are at the front. Like, if your your skull is designed to take hits from the front, you're meant to be fighting someone from the front. That's that's the point. But, is that the way your shoulders and your hips and everything work in combination, punching power is is a real thing. I, I mean, I absolutely think that that we are designed to fight. I mean, we all we've got all these hard bony bits at the front, like kneecaps and shit like that. I so think we're designed to fight, fight each other. Yeah, yeah no, exactly. But that's hand to hand combat. I'm not saying hand to hand against an animal. You'd be fucking when, mad. When this stuff comes up, though, for, in my mind, I I always think of like the present time, right? Like I don't think anybody these days would be able to have a hand hand to hand combat with a deer and win. I don't think but in I the feel past like they could maybe either. in the past they had a better chance. They might have gotten nah. further because uh, let's face it, we're like one or two steps away from being like the humans on Wally -E at this point. And I don't <laughs> I think gonna anybody's going to be fighting. <laughs> That's how a deer. I feel every day. Yeah, nobody's well, fighting I mean, a deer nowadays. I, I, I think. Uh, I think that the important thing to remember is that when before we discovered and figured out things like spears and and bows and arrows and stuff like that, and and how to hunt. We were scavengers who would pick over what was left over from the other animals, like the actual hunting predators who were good at it. Yeah. We would eat the scraps. Like that was our thing. We were like the fucking coyotes you feel like and all a, the rest of it. Early hunters and gatherers, do you think they tried a couple of things before they settled on just using a bow and arrow to take down a deer? I reckon they said, Oh, there's gotta you, be go cases punch, where go they, punch deer. There's you like three easy. of them hiding in a tree and they get the drop <laughs> on a deer and stuff like that, right? There's got I'd love to see that montage of all they the, form like a human net the deer, and they say the deer killing <laughs> fails. Yeah. <laughs> drop on deer trap in human net and like, okay, we do. Ten and things. I die. wish I knew before <laughs> trying to kill a deer. <laughs> Where are Mug? Where are you? Hey guys, it's Og here again with uh, my top 10 list of all the things <laughs> I wish I'd known before I tried to kill a deer. Number whatever. <laughs> I don't know numbers yet. <laughs> we go. First one. No, that's too complicated. One on that one. We do first one. Don't try human net. Don't do it. <laughs> Bad idea. <laughs> Oh, fuck! Yeah, how would you do a top ten list before numbers? That's oh interesting. god, yeah. Uh, it's completely out of sequence. Yeah. Um, all right, this is from Jack. Uh, I'm going to trim this down a bit because this is a very long email. Um, he taking a flight to Auckland. All right, it's a very long series of flights. He's got Brussels, thirteen hours to Bangkok, twelve hour layover, oh. twelve hour flight to Auckland. Hell of a hell of a fucking journey. Long, long, long That's way. a long one. Yeah. Yeah. So. He's, uh, he's ready to board his flight to Auckland. He's looking forward to getting some rest. And it's been 60 hours since he last slept properly. 60 hours. Jesus. Stows his bag above his seat. And he notices that the person he's going to be sat next to him is a quite attractive uh, blonde girl around his age, probably going on a similar trip. And he thinks, oh, she's cute. Maybe I'll try and chat to her later. Yeah. But uh, obviously it was not to be, as you have no doubt guessed. Next thing I know, I'm in a middle seat where I was in an aisle seat before. And I'm looking out the window at City Lights. And I asked the, the, the lady next to him, the different lady, if we've already made it to Auckland. And gosh, that was a quick flight. And she informed him that they were back in Bangkok 
they'd had to turn the plane around because Jack here had had a seizure and passed out. Oh no! Oh my god! And they had to take him back to hospital. So they had to wheel him out of the plane in front of everyone, including the cute girl. Right. Um, so yeah, that's he, the uh, worst part of the he story. He had to go straight to an ambulance. So it's so, just the embarrassment of that. You yeah. Know. So how about this? A weird thing. Uh, you still have to go through passport control even when you're on a gurney. <laughs> right. So well, you have to yeah, go to a, a weird you would, back yeah. alley desk with the world's most bored border control officer attending it. So I guess that's like the really boring shift that you might get. Um, that's the one that control. they. That's the that's the gig that they give you when you're you're like two years out of retiring or whatever. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. You're no longer fit for frontline work. You got to do the the back the back room work. You know. It makes sense. Mm. It makes sense. I I don't think I've ever been on a plane that had to turn around and go back. I have had a missed landing where they had to do a go around, um, and I've had um, flights where we had to turn back from the airport because of bad weather, land somewhere else, wait the weather out, and then reapproach. But I've never had a we're halfway there, we're turning around and going back. I've not <laughs> had that. Uh, I think that would be the worst because you're like, okay, almost there, and then they're like, uh. <laughs> Folks, we're going to have to uh, turn this bird around. Turns out <laughs> uh, we got a problem with the toilet, and uh, it's against FAA regulations to fly without a working toilet. Uh, so uh, we'll be back in. Uh, we'll be landing uh, in uh, 14 hours' time, and uh, we'll be on our way again in 48 hours. Thank you, folks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it. That is it. That is the one. And everyone's that's like, so oh! oh God. I guess maybe they weren't far out of Bangkok when they had to turn around, uh, yeah. there, or else yeah, they would have. dude gone somewhere else right but i mean i guess like ugh, just what, what's the moral of the story try and get some sleep however you can yeah, yes. so was that what caused it generally yeah just like get some a sleep like a, f a f massive fatigue yes. yeah just, just look literal... after yourself physically and mentally as much as you can you know yeah don't push yourself too hard yeah all right here's one this is billy from london Billy, you don't get many Billies. Billy, days. oh Billy, oh, that Billy's oh, trouble. Billy. That Billy's trouble. You stay away from him. But Mummy's fun. You stay away from that Billy from London. He's no good. <laughs> Here's this email. Uh, <laughs> this is in reference to Triforce episode two five three, release date twelfth April, April twenty twenty three. Wow. Now the reason that that is so specific is because Billy works in TV production. Okay. So he's well aware of how you date an episode. You don't say episode 253, you say the release date. Very good, Billy. I'd like that format to become a thing. When people say, you were saying back in episode 118, tell us the date, because that way we can try and center in our heads what the fuck we were thinking. Otherwise, we got no idea. Uh, you talked about TV turnover times. We were talking about how quickly they make EastEnders. Yes. You guys remember this? Yes, yes. This was yes. how far ahead production might be from filming to on-screen release. Speculate on how a tight schedule can affect story quality and stuff like writer's strike. So, uh, Billy is a dialogue editor and works in TV post-production for the last eight to nine years. Part of this time as a junior editor, machine room operator, but during the eight to nine years has mostly worked on TV dramas, factual documentaries, and occasionally films. Most go to BBC ITV Channel 4 or Netflix, Amazon, and so on. So these are the turnarounds. Of these shows, right? Uh, you you won't see uh, Billy on the credits for a lot of these shows due to TV credits only lasting thirty seconds. It's very dog eat dog when it comes to crediting. It's right, just, really. So each season can be different. So I'm only giving you the average turnover time from vague start of filming to on screen release, and you can speculate about why this is. So um, the five billion pound super sewer TV show, which I believe you watched, I love that. Yeah, filming. To release three years. Oh, it would have, yeah. It was um, three years. You, and you could tell in the wow. documentary itself, it came back after long periods of time because there were points where work would updates. stop. And yeah, it was like more like updates. But the actual filming, editing, and everything was really consistent. Like you didn't, you didn't feel like a lot of time had passed in between. So, I mean, props to them. It, it felt, it flowed really nicely. You know, you never noticed yeah. any gaps. All right. The Chase. You know the show The Chase? I've heard of it, yes. yeah. How about this? One and a half to two years. Wow. Because really? they film 160 to 190 episodes per series. They all have to be edited, they all have to be checked and everything, all of it. One and a, one and a half to two years between filming and release. That's pretty crazy. One, one thing I, I just want to add as well, one thing I you, you don't really realize, you know, sometimes with some of these shows that you're watching, um but particularly like reality um tv stuff they film a lot and they mm. don't use 
a lot. Oh, so much. So, um, so but, much. But you know, when people are, are losing their minds and being um, unreasonable and stuff like that, it's because they're so fucking exhausted. Like, uh, it doesn't sound like it would be hard, but they, they're, they, they're filming, like, so much all the time. They're always on. And till, like, you know, three, four in the morning sometimes and stuff, like, you know, like... Um, some of these shows where there's like, um, you know, there'll, there'll be like parts of the show where they'll be out in the wild, if you like, or whatever. But then they'll come in and speak to like a panel or something like that. Some of those sessions just go on and on and on forever. But I think they do yeah. it. They design it that way because people do get tired and they start to just be really, really silly, you know, like they start to break down and stuff like yeah, that. Maybe. But it makes for good drama. And, you know, it's like it's almost like little ways of crafting more drama mm. for the show or whatever. But. It's one. It's worth uh, remembering, I guess, because sometimes you see these people and you're like, there's no way that these people can be like this. And they probably aren't. It's probably just because they're so fucking tired, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Like, I mean, there's 2,500 episodes of The Chase. Yeah. 2,500 Holy... episodes of The Chase? It's on every day. No. I've never it, seen I mean... one of them. <laughs> like, no, I've never, I've never, I've watched, never it. watched that show. I've watched it a couple times, but it's... Lewis, it's, that's disappointing. They, you've got to understand. <laughs> that is really it's, disappointing. It's daytime... <laughs> <laughs> Daytime TV. So the the Apprentice, seven to eight months. Uh, Billy worked on series nine through twelve. Worked on those. Yeah. So seven to eight months from the start of filming to it actually being on the screen. Jeez. Come dine with me. Similar six to eight months. Yeah. Twenty four twenty four hours in police custody, which is a cracking show. Yeah, it's great. That. That's a great show. Yeah. Six to nine months. Jesus. Um, I was going to surprise Peaky Blinders. Seven to nine months. I always thought a drama like that, with all the costume and everything, would take longer. But I guess. I mean, that's, uh, you know, they, they something all set up. Something that's is, like, is like scripted like that probably takes less time, realistically. Because yeah, because they know what they've got. They're, right? I think they're probably more organized when they come to shooting scenes mm. and stuff like that. Whereas something like police custody, it probably takes way longer because there's a lot of, it, like, you know, somebody w might be taken into into custody and then there might be days and days and days where something doesn't happen or whatever i know it's like 24 hours but it's you know what i mean like that it's it's not always that yeah, simple yeah. right they need access and stuff like that so it, it probably does take a lot longer i mean I, I know one of the other things is and i mean when i worked um very briefly in television one of the things the directors always had to do was when they're out filming they try to film the reason that they film so fucking much it's going because the edit involves basically the director sitting there watching, or the producer watching all everything, watching every single minute of what was filmed and making notes, and then trying to fit, put that into an episode. And on the very heavily formatted things like "Come Dine with Me," it's not that bad. But if you're trying to make a documentary or something like Twenty Four Hours in Police Custody, where you genuinely don't know where the story's going to go from start to finish, you're filming the investigation. You have to watch through all of this and think, all right, does this help? Does this tell the story? And then there's arguments about leaving it in, what to take out. It's a it's a big, big job yeah. when you don't know the format. And like you're saying, with Peaky Blinders, it's all been storyboarded. They know what shots they need to get for the script. They get all the shots. And then the editing is about how do they tighten this scene up or how do they make it look best? Which tape do they use? Uh, and maybe then some reshoots if they say, well, you know, we, we need to reshoot this. But it's certainly a lot more structured than a reality TV show. I think The Apprentice is more structured in a way because they know what they're going to get. They set it all up ahead of time. You're going to get the tasks, then you're going to go into the room and they're, you know, they're going to have some stuff in the house. So it's a bit more rigid. But any of those I documentaries where you're investigating though. something, it's almost impossible to plan. Yeah, I right? think like, so. If you're doing The Apprentice, you've got to understand that you are running on a little bit of a timer because people will get kicked out and start talking to the tabloids yeah, about it, yeah, right? Yes. And so yeah. you're going to get leaks. And so it's like, how, you know, how quick do we put this out I guess it, I get the impression that the apprentice is put out as quick as it can be within reason. Do you know what I mean? They're not yeah. sitting on it for a year. Um, and I'm sure all the people are sworn to secrecy, but yeah, you know, to, and you know, you could just pay all the contestants a little bit of money to keep them quiet. Well, I afterwards. think you just say you don't pay them until the show airs, um, right. like a bonus, if you like. So we, you know, half now, half when the when the show airs. There must be some standard pro school with that. I don't know. Maybe it gives it more maybe. breathing room. Anyway, we've done loads of things this year. We've recorded like um, we cause remember the BBC did the Traitors. Yeah. Yes. Uh, we we recorded our version of Where that. Where did you call I was, it? I was going to be in that, but I was sick, unfortunately. And we've recorded. We called it the Cult. Yeah. The cult. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. That's what you guys called the Cult. And then we also did uh, another Task Box mm -hmm. Taskmaster thing. Yeah, yeah. Task rip off. So that's we've got we've got these things that we've recorded. It's just it's time to like takes time to you know get them 
put them th- put them through the process. You yeah, know, get them ready to well, go. Yeah, I mean, so yeah, I can see how this happens. What's next, Pflax? Okay, this is from Wolfgang. Wolf? On a recent Wolf? Yeah. Wolfgang? Wolfgang. Oh, on a yeah, recent Wolfgang. episode, you you guys started talking about asteroids and the film Armageddon. Sorry, I'll stop doing that. After someone working <laughs> in asteroid detection wrote in, Yes. I'm a maths graduate student who has done a little research on the subject. I thought you might be interested. What, your modern... own research? He's done his own research. <laughs> okay. Yeah, All modern right. simulations show that it would probably be a terrible idea to try and blow up an incoming asteroid. It's because doing so would most likely produce a whole load of shrapnel all headed in the same direction as the original asteroid. It would be like the difference between being shot with a buckshot instead of a slug. If it's a direct hit, you're probably still dead either way. Right. So the question is, if blowing up the asteroid is a bad idea, uh, what would we actually do? And do you remember this thing called the, the NASA DART spacecraft? Yes. So um, they vaguely. fired it in an asteroid, didn't they? Yes. And they wanted to see, could we change its orbit around its parent body? So they hit this thing. It's a dimorphous, it's called. And they struck it with something. It's orbiting another asteroid. They wanted to change its orbit by 73 seconds or more. And they managed to change it by 32 minutes. So the mission massively succeeded, surpassed its minimum benchmark by more than 25 times. So if we do spot one of these incoming asteroids, the plan is to fire this dart thing at it right. early, as early as possible. And then change it, its its course. Change its trajectory. Because if you imagine it's like millions of miles. If you change it by 0.01%, it's going to miss you. Because it's, it's like the difference between, it's like trying to throw a baseball at something on the other side of the country. Do you know what I mean? Yes. So you have to be absolutely 100% accurate. If you're off by a tiny fraction of a degree, you're going to be like th- millions of miles wide. Well, in, so, um, in Armageddon, though, they didn't want to blow up the asteroid either, though, right? They just wanted to change its course because it was the size of Texas. That was the thing. They absolutely wanted to blow it up. They couldn't blow but, up the whole thing, though. Dude, they, that was the whole point of the film. They dug in there with, like, nukes and shit. I thought that they, was like, to, to just change the, the course as well. I mean, it... No, I think That was thought, in Armageddon. Yeah. They I think it they deep said impact it's the split. spoiler, the, the actually got hit, right? I haven't seen that yet. <laughs> <laughs> with, with Armageddon, if I remember correctly, they wanted to blow it up, and they then had this simulation that said that if we blow it up, the two pieces will miss. Right. Like, you That's, blow it in two oh, along I a see, scene, yes. what, what, and the two bits will okay, go Okay, I'm side. sorry. It's been a little while since I've seen Armageddon. That's all right. I'm I didn't saying. even realize uh, who the actors were in the uh, in the movie That's last true. time we spoke about it. So <laughs> take it all with a pinch of salt. I'm sorry, right. okay? It's just, I mean, the nuclear weapons was kind of the one of the biggest... Parts of the film was that the reason the army guys had to come along was I remember the they nuclear the weapons, through nukes, but, right? But I thought that they, I didn't think that they'd be crazy enough to try to blow the damn thing up. <laughs> you know, we got no choice. <laughs> oh man, and Armageddon! Right. It always comes back Fucking to Armageddon, Armageddon for some reason. It does reason. always come back to. I don't know they why. do blow it up in Deep Impact as well with nukes. Don't, turns okay, out. I so, haven't so seen that. Doesn't that. Work. One yet. So what is what is Dart? Dart with Dart is like a double impact. It stands for something. A double asteroid it's called, redirection. It's test. called Deep Impact Armageddon asteroid test. So but basically, they they're not putting an engine or anything. They're just smacking it with a with a. With a spaceship, yes, yeah. just crashing a spaceship into yes. it. Because such of... a ghetto solution, isn't it? Uh, no, it's just physics, isn't it? I mean, I guess so. You know, everything has to have an equal and opposite, and all the rest of it. So if you clobber something, it it changes its its direction. It has to because it's it can't push back. It's gonna, you know, you're both gonna bounce off each other, but you're gonna bounce slightly further than you would have. So you just well, I think the idea bit. is that you're gonna eject a load of debris from the asteroid, and that's gonna be what changes its trajectory, right? It propels it. I thought it's, it was literally you clobber something and then it has to respond because that's just yeah, momentum and all the rest yeah, of it. Yeah, it. it would change the momentum and then the path. I guess it right? would as well. But it's, it's, an, it's like a little spaceship hitting it. It's not. Yeah. I would, I would imagine the. Anyway. All right. This don't is, write in about that. No, that's please. <laughs> well, th- we told them not to write in about various things. They still write in. So it no, help. no they, deep impact they spoilers point- <laughs> either. Please. If we express any confusion, someone will write in. So. Also, if they think their point is so good, and occasionally they're right, I'll read it anyway, even if we begged. I mean, we said, please don't Wisconsin emails. I've got five. 
Again, from just this is week, it just yeah. the same stuff as well, or is it is is there now like a war? Uh, and Wisconsin is the battleground. There's like some I, war tunnels they want us to see. <laughs> there's some there's local like seafood so, they want us to there's sample. There's a lighthouse there. You can stay Lats. in it once a year. Like I, I don't even want to hint at what it's about because that'll just lead to more emails. Okay, right. If if it's exceptional. I'll read it, but they're, they're basically just say. I think it's people who just listened to that mailbag and haven't listened to any of the subsequent ones. You think it's like um, uh, it's like people who don't even normally listen to the podcast, but because yeah. we covered a subject that was so controversial, then they just yeah, turned up, right? Probably made the Wisconsin local news. Yeah, probably. This week, a think- podcast from the United Kingdom has been has been uh, having a pop, as the Brits say, <laughs> in Wisconsin. Those Go ahead silly limeys are at it again. <laughs> All right, this this is week, NASA Ask- Ask- has Ask- fired a space probe that has redirected an asteroid, so it's going to strike Wisconsin. <laughs> All places. Excellent. Mission accomplished. No one, no one is worried. <laughs> oh, okay, don't email in off the back of that one. All right, this is uh, this is from a former coal miner. A former? Um, former coal miner, and we were talking about coal mining stories, I think. Or I, I, I put a request in if you have an interesting job. So don't just... Like, I get quite a few email, emails. These are really lovely emails. They say... Here's my interesting job. Would you like some stories about it? Assume yes. If you have an interesting job, send me a couple of stories. Yeah, right away. we'll be the judge of whether it's an we'll, interesting we'll judge, job or not. Yes. Yeah, just ship them, ship them in here. Um, so I mean, obviously, maybe people are trying to save themselves typing something that isn't gonna gonna make it. But um, all right. So uh, greasings. What do you think a greasing is? Uh, it's when they have to like grease up the tunnels because they're uh, they're so uh, narrow that the uh, coal miners can't fit through them, so they got to grease them up so that they can slide through into all of the unexposed cavities that they find underground uh, mm. and in and try to find more coal. Sadly not. Anytime oh. someone exceeds, uh, succeeds in their job, changes crews, gets promoted, they get a greasing. Oh, right, okay. Um, and they get stripped naked uh, and covered in cylinder grease from head to toe. They'll shove it in your mm. ass crack, they'll put it all over your balls, and then oh, they have who to... Is- who is doing this? The, the coal miners. Oh, right. They're rowdy lads. They love a grease. Lewis is very interested in this. <laughs> what is cylinder grease? Well, I don't know. Is it like grease mm. for a cylinder, mate? I've, lads, I've got to pop to the loo. Uh, can you Go just, for it. Right, you do just, that. just wait? We'll wait, we'll wait. We'll wait, we'll wait. A greasy cylinder. <laughs> A cylinder gre- a greased yeah. up cylinder. That's what I was thinking as well. Hot. Try fitting that in your ass. Yeah, well, it depends on the size, I guess, doesn't it? I mean, I imagine the, uh, the small Chihuly piece that you sent me, I gotta say, fits into my ass very comfortably. I'm so pleased. Well, it's, yes. a, it's a Hershey's Kiss. It is, a, it is the size of a Hershey's Kiss, you're right. Yeah, yeah, it's supposed to be one. I'm glad you like it. I love it, yeah. Did I tell you where I put it? Yeah, in your ass. Well, apart from there, because it can't just sit resting in there forever. <laughs> well, I don't know. Is it on Pride of Place on a shelf somewhere? Oh, no, it's in the bathroom. It's in the ground floor yes. bathroom. Yes, yeah, yeah, you yeah, remembered. Yeah. You got I'm it. Pleased. You got it. Yeah, it's uh, in the bathroom. It's that's, in the bathroom. It's like a little, it looks like a little little gumdrop. What have you there. done with your trophies? Uh, I haven't even opened them yet. Um, I, what are they? Jingle Jam trophies? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, uh, they're still in the bubble wrap. I'll open them. You've got to get them in Pride of Place somewhere. Where am I going to put these things, though? You can just mount them on the wall or something. I don't know. Wherever. Oh, fudge. Use them as bookends. They're only like plastic shelving yeah. things. Uh, Okay. You'll have a, you've got to have a shelf somewhere. Yeah, I, I've got a shelf or two somewhere. I'm sure I can find one. Good. Man, what's he doing in there? I don't know. I should come over to Jersey at some point, by the way. Yeah, yeah, you should. It's, weather's nice Before now. Before the it's end good. of summer. Yeah. yeah. You can like, try to stay at the lighthouse this time if you can. Okay, I'll see if it's available. <laughs> You're obsessed with staying the night there. I feel like when if you woke up, though, and you saw that view first thing, it would be such a good... A good boost to your mental, you know? Yeah, because it's such a nice looking... I mean, I see it every day because I've got the calendar that you've sent me. Oh, yeah. You always send me a calendar every year. It's like you're here. I turn it to the yeah, lighthouse, I just leave it on that because it's nice. No. I don't want to look at like, cows in a field on the other... Come day. on, man. There's not There's not enough. There's not really 12 things that look good in Jersey. So it's, it's like three shots of the lighthouse and then like <laughs> some ruins... <laughs> Uh, that that pier, that nice castle town on the on the east coast. Yeah, oh, Gory Castle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gory Castle. That, that is nice. And that's quite Pic- nice. Picturesque. Very. Isn't it? It's yeah. a very uh, calendar shot. Yeah, and then there's a couple of shots of you, a couple of shots of you with like a pickle blocking your 
junk, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah. Like that's sexy. That's the classic, yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, like uh, it's like those those pin-up calendars, but with people that you wouldn't normally associate being in a pin-up calendar, you know? Like, sometimes they do, like, old ladies and stuff like that. Yes, like calendar it's, it's, girls. It's, yeah. With me, it's uh, small island farming. <laughs> not wearing any clothes <laughs> yeah and it's like uh you're holding like a shovel really big and it's pickles just... that i just harvested covering yeah, yeah, yeah. up my junk that's yeah. right or like um jumbo size you holding up a strawberry <laughs> yes <laughs> 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 or like oh, a little man. yakult <laughs> <laughs> it's like a jumbo size yakult you mean that's what... <laughs> <laughs> Yakult. <laughs> fucking hell. <laughs> you ever drink those things? Oh no, they're fucking horrible. It's like a, it's like shit. It's, it's like shit in a thimble. It's so <laughs> gross. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Uh, yeah. They're really good for you though, apparently. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure they are. Oh, man. Pro probiotic, you know, getting the Pro, guts. Yeah, getting your, your guts works, out. Yeah. Yeah. Sort it out. Maybe P Flax needs one of them. Fucking taking long enough in the. Holy shit, man! This guy needs like a. This guy needs like a, a direct hit of fiber into his system. I think. How long does he take? Is he is he he's... using your toilet? What's he doing? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he's got a chihuly in his bathroom too. I can only poop if I see a chihuly. <laughs> <laughs> the only way i'm able to poop nowadays that's what happens so sorry yeah. did, did you guys continue the podcast no we were just chatting we were chatting about oh you waiting sure for you to get back yeah uh sorry about that how was sips's toilet how was it yeah did you, you <laughs> flew all the way over here to use my guest bathroom yeah was the uh was the was the theory yeah that was what happened nice so um okay this is quite good this is from jenna I uh, really Brett. enjoyed your brief discussion on dancing and your refreshing thoughts on not giving a shit and dancing whenever you want without emb embarrassment. <laughs> right, sure. Sounds right. like us. I wish yes. I shared your confidence. I wanted to know your group's thoughts on flash mobs and if you've ever witnessed a flash mob and if so, how did you react? About seven years ago, I was part of a flash mob for secondary schools uh, seven, for the secondary school's 75th year celebration. It was right. in the backfield of the school and there were about 100 to 200 parents and students wandering around aimlessly mixed in with with about 50 of us as part of the mob. The performance we were doing was a singing and dancing medley of ABBA songs that lasted about 10 minutes. It was humiliating wow. for several reasons. Yes. One, because we were all spread out trying to look normal, you could barely hear the cue for the music, so we all looked super weird. Uh, parents right. all immediately reached for their phones and stood about three feet in front of you, aiming cameras at you whilst they're jiving to Waterloo. Uh, right. And the awkward walk away after finishing was like a walk of shame. Um, I could believe that, Jenna. I, I have seen a flash mob. Um, it was at an underground station. I want to say it was might have been King's Cross. Either way, it was at a tube station. In it's London. kind of it like a wholesome prank that's also incredibly cringe. No, it wasn't. It wasn't a prank. The, well, okay, wait. No, no, no. But it so, feels like a sort of wholesome prank, doesn't it? It's right. Like I don't know what this is. Is to what? shock people around. I'll, I'll your... explain what it is, Sips. You're out in public. Right. And it'll feel like it's a normal day. There's no groups of people around or whatever. Suddenly, it's like that, a yeah. musical. Everyone yeah. bursts into song spontaneously. And right, they have right, like okay. choreographed dance routine. They sing a song, there's music, and then they vanish. So, yeah. there right. are, flash mobs was a big thing. I want to say at the start of the millennium, there were, seemed to be a lot more of them. It was kind of a big thing because you could now organize this stuff online, you know, and you could just say, hey, we're going to do a flash mob. Here's a plan. Meet here at this yeah, time. And they're more about filming bystanders' reactions right. than right. the actual flash mob itself, right? But the, the whole thing is they sort of melt away post performance. They're gone. So they just turn up. So it's up. like nothing happened. Yeah. 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 So Again. they'll just, it's like suddenly people that would previously just sit there reading a paper drop it and they'll all stand up and they all sing and dance this choreographed and they, routine. And they're joining in. And then they're yeah, gone. I see. Yeah. I see. Yeah. That, that's the whole thing. So I have seen one and inevitably. As soon as it's over, of course, they're handing out flyers for some fucking corporation. So I think if it's people doing it organically and it's just for fun, I mean, I wouldn't do it, but fair play. It's, you know, livens up a day. I'm sure people enjoy it. If you're doing it because you're a company uh, and you think this is going to win people over, go fuck yourselves. If you're employed to do it and it's the best gig you could get, good luck to you. So in essence, the smaller the flash mob sort of is, if it's just a group of people and they're doing it for fun, uh, you know, fair enough. You're a corporation organizing it. You can fuck off. That's I've seen it be used in TV shows as well as like cover for like a criminals to escape from a bank robbery or something like this. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like the classic. There's a festival. That's a good going idea, on, actually. And so the, the James Bond idea. disappears into the crowd of people who are 
tro- trooping down the street in all their costumes yeah. and stuff. That's a classic again. Yeah, yeah, that was uh, that was the one in, in that started off in Mexico, wasn't it? I can't remember the Day of the Dead celebrations. It's a very common yeah. type of like. I think so. Yeah, I, I don't know. Like, if I'm, <sighs> I, I think it's it's a bit passe now. If yeah, I could use that I, word, <laughs> I uh, I I don't know if I if I was with my kids and they thought it was great, I would be down for it. If I was just on my own, or if, I, if it was just like me and my wife or whatever, I would probably think it was just a bit cringe, you know, just like, a bit uh, much, isn't it? Just, just a, a bit little much. bit. It's not. Uh, I d- and and my reaction, I don't think, would be very interesting either you know what i mean right. like yeah, i would no. just i would be slightly dying inside right. and retreating probably yes, a if full that on, happened full on noble retreat I think. Yes, yes i would just be like if i was walking somewhere i would pick up the pace a little bit and get the fuck out of there so that i didn't have to you yes, know i think that's a completely cuz cuz the whole thing would annoy me actually uh, <laughs> thinking about it the people yeah. that stop to look at it would annoy me more than anything i think you know, like you, you, like people that get their phones out and start oh, recording yeah, it and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Like, it's a flash I, mob, huh? I, I don't know. I, I don't go in for all that. I just yeah. like simple-minded uh, folks. Yeah, well, I'd say. I mean, it's fair if that's fun for them, and and they. Yeah. But it's just it's not fun for me. But so, so would, I would just like, be out a of cat there. toy. I'm just thinking that would have the same effect on them, like one of those dangly cat toys that's on like a, a piece of fluff on a fishing pole. <laughs> I think it would probably get the same effect from those kinds of people. Yeah, uh, okay, it's, uh, like, it's it's kind of like um, th- those have to be rooted in uh, like I know it's like more of a production, but it's it it reminds me of like you know those like it's like a bit of a trope in like older movies. You know, they're you're walking down the streets of Rome or whatever, and then somebody just starts like you know playing a guitar mm. and a song or or whatever, and everyone's like, oh oh, this is so nice, this is so romantic. If somebody did that to me, I'd be like, the fuck off, like fuck off. I don't want <laughs> the, like everybody's looking at me now and stuff. They're, just get out of here. Don't don't play the guitar close to me. Like just do it to someone else or whatever, and then I'll walk away very quickly yeah yeah I've, I've got it's the a, same sort of thing i've got a cracker of an email here uh this is from ross and rosie uh rosie is, rosie is the chef apparently uh my partner and i do an annual dinner date where we each make three themed menus for the other to choose from uh this year my partner made wholesome. me wholesome very very fucking wholesome this year my partner made me triforce themed menus with the following meals so of course they're both vegan so everything is vegan these are nice. the menus High five. This is Sips's menu. Starter, poutine with perfect fries and gravy. Now stop right there. That is not poutine. That's veg- That's vegan pr- poutine. That is not a true poutine. I just want to say that. You I'm can sure get it's vegan great. cheese curds. I've had it. It's fine. not the same. I'm sorry it's not no, the same. No, it's great. It's great. I've, I want I'm it to be called fan. vegan poutine with vegan fries and vegan gravy. Plant-based plant plant poutine. Plant poutine. A main plant, of sounds plant poutine. Sounds spicy healthy. mushroom stuffed calzone with a side of cheese straws and then some almond energy bars inspired by Naked and an Oreo thick shake. So it's Holy obviously crap. can't be a milkshake, it's going to be a no. thick shake. Right, right. That's yours anyway, Sips. Okay, no, that's good. I, I, I like the sound of all of that. Nice, there you go. Uh, Lewis, wow. your starter is avocado pomegranate and mango salad. So avocado. That is a very Lewis thing my dream. to eat. That's my dream. He loves meal. that. A main of spicy coconut ramen with green beans, summer rolls, and peanut dip. Are Ooh. you allergic to peanuts? I He's am. He's allergic very, to, yeah. to, so to nuts. So yeah. you killed Lewis. Congratulations. <laughs> but is he allergic to these nuts? <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> <Got him. laughs> uh-huh. Your anyway. dessert is matcha, whatever that is, and lime pie with macerated strawberries. Macerated. Ooh. Oh, Ooh, I don't know if you need to grind up strawberries in the way that you're suggesting. But I um, ma- matcha is the green tea powder from Japan. Oh, it's okay. nice. Yeah, and it's good. to drink a tropical smoothie. Enjoy. Mm. Oh, a tropical uh, smoothie me, sounds good. For me, a lentil and carrot nuggets with tamarind date ketchup. Oh. That wow. would be pretty good, actually. I can see you salivating you would, right now. No, I'd like be that. sharing that with the lads. Yeah, help yourselves. Uh, you would like that. <laughs> this actually does sound nice. Uh, it says meaty, which obviously it's it's not meat, so let's not use that word. Mushroom bourguignon with sage and shallot polenta. That sounds delightful. That really yes. does sound very nice. I'd love that. that and they actually include good, yeah. a, a photo of it that I'll show you guys. Oh, is that the one they picked then? Yes. The dessert okay. of the banoffee pie and a drink. Homemade ginger beer. Would have liked just beer, but I'll take a ginger beer. That sounds fine. Naturally, I chose the Pyrian menu. Oh, thank you, Ross. Well, it goes to show who's his favorite 
Trifle. I can see why this one got read out. No, it's just that this is the best menu. Like favoritism, sorry, but... much? No, no, I didn't even read that part ahead of time. No, I believe you. Sure. Me, so rude. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, this is a great mailbag, as always. Yeah, no, it was a real nice one. Yeah, our audience really make it this podcast a lot better, don't they? Yeah. Thanks, everyone. We'll we'll see you all. Um, yes. Yeah, see you all next so week. Much. All right. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Bye.